Hello, my name is Cesar Saavedra. I'm a technical marketing manager here at GitLab. In this short presentation, I will give you an overview of the ECS task definition from local JSON capability introduced in uh, GitLab 13.3, which was an improvement uh, to our uh, GitLab's ECS uh, deployment template. This new capability introduces the ability to update the task definition of an ECS service with a JSON file defined in your local repository. But before we jump into this new capability, uh, introducing 13.3, let's quickly revisit how you set up an ECS cluster and also how you integrate it uh, with GitLab. So if you check out the, uh, our documentation for the integration, our integration with ECS, uh, you will notice that you actually need to define three variables in your project, ECS cluster, service, and task definition. And um, in my case, I have this project, and um, here I have ECS cluster, which is called C Saavedra ECS cluster, that I already defined, and I'm sorry, created. Then you have ECS service. In this demo, I'm going to be talking about the, an ECS service that is for Fargate. And that's um, the environment of this variable is going to be uh, review wildcard environments. And then uh, the task definition, which is called uh, CSAVEDRA Spring Task Def uh, F. So those are the three variables needed. Obviously, beyond, beyond that, you also need the, the AWS access key region and secret access key to be able to connect to AWS uh, from, from the runner. Uh, one more thing you need is the Auto DevOps uh, platform target. I have Auto DevOps enabled here I'm, I'm, because I'm using the uh, ECS deployment template. And in this case, I've defined the value to be Fargate because I'm going to be creating a Fargate uh, target um, Task definition in a Fargate, uh, Fargate uh, ECS service. I have dupl duplicates here because they are targeted to different environments, as you can see. The next question is how do you create, uh, you know, you have to create ECS service, uh, the cluster first uh, service, task definition. Uh, so uh, one way to do it is, uh, you know, following the um, AWS documentation. And the first thing that uh, personally I've, I create is uh, the task definition. And the task definition is a description of what's going to be in, in a container that is going to be running as a service in ECS. So you follow the instructions. Uh, they, they actually have uh, launch wiz uh, wizards in AWS, so you can just go through each page and define uh, the values as, as uh, you know, per the requirements of your application. Then the next thing I did was create the cluster. And again, there are instructions on how to create the, the cluster. Uh, and I chose EC2 Linux plus networking. And then after that, I created an application load balancer that would take in traffic from uh, the internet and route it to a specific ECS service. In this case, I have an ECS service per environment. So I have three load balancers. And then finally, I created the uh, serp, the ECS service. And they actually, you can follow the documentation as well as the wizards uh, that the uh, AWS provides. So let's just, let me show you what it looks like. That looks like once they are created, so here is this CSAVEDRA ECS cluster. This uh, has three services. I have three environments. So my production environment is actually uh, deploying my application to this running service. Uh, I have another branch for review, which is this one here. The review that, that starts with a two rollback. That environment is uh, being deployed to this right here, to this service. And the Fargate-based uh, service is being deployed to this uh, instance here. 
The first iteration of, of uh, our integration to ECS was the ability to deploy from uh, GitLab to ECS through the pipeline. And it looked kind of like this. So here, so, so this is a pipeline, a deployment pipeline, and it's building this application here that happens to be a Java Spring sample application. And then it deploys it to Fargate. To, uh, it's basically deploying it to this service. Okay. And it's using the task definition name C sub editor Spring task def. So these are the parameters that are being defined in the environment variables of the project, the cluster, the service name, and the task definition. The um, improvement introduced in 13.3 to this integration is the ability to actually have the content of the task definition, which is right here. Let's open the one for Fargate, for example. You can pick the last one here. To have this file, this JSON file, defined and uh, def uh, actually declared within your project. So what we're going to do in this in this uh, demo is we're going to be creating a file and and the file content will be the task definition. And then when we do the deployment to ECS the deployment will use that file that you created here in your project to push out the deployment to ECS instead of just reusing the one that was already here. Okay. And, uh, you know, this allows you to manage your definition file, task definition file, uh, within your project, you know, you get the versioning, obviously, you can, you can, um, you know, track the changes, um, have col uh, stakeholders collaborating uh, MRs uh, to modify and update the task definition file. And also it streamlines, streamlines your uh, deployment to ECS, making uh, you more uh, productive as a developer. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how the uh, pipeline looks like. So the pipeline here is super simple. It just includes a template, okay, which is uh, basically the GitLab CCS deployment template. There's a bunch of variables here uh, to disable uh, a lot of the tests that are included in the Auto DevOps pipeline. So if we look at the um, the EC deploy ECS GitLab here, this uh, contains uh, five stages, and it includes uh, actually it um, is setting up the DevOps platform to ECS which is not gonna be used, I'm using, remember I'm using Fargate in the project, so that's uh, gonna be overridden. And then it includes these two templates. And uh, the one of interest here is this one here. And this template is actually the one doing the deployment. Uh, there are different types of deployments. It could be uh, just a production ECS, a production Fargate, review Fargate, review ECS. There's those four options. And uh, what it's really doing is doing an ECS update task definition. So it's going to think of it as going to be replacing the running service uh, by applying the new um, task definition file from your GitLab project. So let's start making the changes then. So in this case, let's add the task definition file to our project. So first let's create a directory. And then inside that directory, let's create a new file. So how did I go about creating this task definition file? Well, one way to do it is to actually go to the uh, AWS documentation for ECS task definition creation and copy the template and then adjust the template um, according to your application needs, and then use that as the uh, content of the file that you will be storing in your repository, which is this one here. But what I did was, which is another way, is to use the Amazon ECS uh, Task Definition Console, 
you create on click on create test definition you select Fargate and then you follow the wizard entering the um, the name of your test definition the requirements of your application and container and then at the end you can click on this button and uh, it'll give you the JSON uh, file for uh, all everything that you selected in the through the wizard you can copy and paste that JSON onto here. Now what I did was I copy that JSON, but that JSON needs to be mod slightly modified. This is the original JSON that I copy and pasted. And one thing I had to do is delete every single line that had a value equal, uh, equal to null. So this is the before and after. So notice this file has no null values. Another thing I did was I had to delete the section that says repository credential. So I deleted this so it wouldn't get in the way of the runner um, correctly uh, signing in to the AWS ECS environment. And the last thing I did was I had to make sure that the AWS log groups had the um, the location of the task definition that we were replacing. Okay, so this is the, think of this as the before, uh, and then the new, we're replacing that task definition with this new, new one. Something to keep in mind here though, is that you need to keep the log location uh, the way it was for this to work. All right, so the next thing that we need to do here is actually define a variable and the new environment variable needs to be CI AWS ECS task definition file. And then the value is going to be CI. And then the file name is TD ECS Fargate dot JSON. Oh, and then we want this to be used there. TD ES Fargate JSON. Right now, I have a running service under one of my environments. Under this environment, which is the one I want to affect with this change, it says spring is here in blue. Okay, background is blue. So just make, let's make a change for the, uh, of the background and one more thing is that uh, if we go to the cluster, right now this uh, this is the service name that I'm, I'm trying to redeploy, I'm, I will be redeploying, and the task definition is C Saavedra Spring Task Def uh, F, okay, for Fargate. So after the deployment, this task definition name will change because the new name will be will be uh, this one right here. So the new name will be C Saavedra Fargate Task Def dash F, not Spring. Notice that this is a new name, okay? And I'm showing you this so that you can see the difference once uh, the deployment happens. So let's make a change to the code so that we can kick off a pipeline. We need to go here. So let's just go to Web IDE and let's make a change. We'll make this, we'll turn this to uh, brown. Okay, and then we also need to change it here.
All right, so then we commit the changes to the same branch. And this is going to kick off a pipeline. Which is going to build and it will deploy to Fargate. Now that the pipeline is done executing, let's go into the review Fargate job and notice that it succeeded. The task definitions has been updated with the file from our project. And let's check on the Amazon ECS and here as you can see the ECS service dash F here as before no longer has the C Saavedra Spring task definition F now it has the C Saavedra Fargate task def dash F uh, and version number one because this is the first version of this task definition that has been applied to this service if we look at the tasks Notice that the new task is on its way up. So we need to wait until it's in a running state uh, for us to see the newly, newly deployed web page. Now that the uh, Fargate ser uh, task is up and running, we can go and check the web application to ensure that uh, the changes that we applied earlier have been deployed and are successfully up and running. And there it is. This is the updated uh, background. So the changes have been deployed using the new task definition file. Uh, by the way, uh, just as you, you can use and declare a file, a JSON file here. Another way to provide the JSON uh, file for the task definition is to do it as a variable. So in that case, you would come to the variable here, variable section, and here uh, you can actually paste the content of the JSON file here and make sure that you change this to file, and that should also work. So in conclusion, in this technical demo, we have discussed the new feature ECS task definition from local JSON. And uh, having the task definition file on your GitLab repository allows you to maintain its versions uh, via our version control and collaboration capabilities, have other stakeholders collaborate on the task definition configuration and development, rollback to a previous version of a task definition, and can also help you with your organizational audit and compliance of uh, your ECS container uh, definitions. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Thank you.